Hello friend and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis and today I'm going to be taking my first shot at making an oval bonsai pot. I've had a lot of requests for oval pots. They seem to be a popular design choice right now and pretty much since forever. I figure I'd take a crack at it and share how the first one goes. So just you know, so everyone knows I've never made an oval before, I've mostly been throwing rounds. So this will combine new skills of hand building with what I've already learned to do on the wheel. When I approached this oval, I decided to use a rolled slab for the base and wheel thrown walls. I haven't done much work with slabs at all as of yet, so I'm sure that this slab has been abused in more ways than one with me handling and transporting it. I roll my slabs at my friend's studio that's 45 minutes away and then I keep the slabs in a damp box until I'm ready to work with them. If you'd like to learn how to make a damp box to keep your clay damp until you're ready to work with it, you can check out my video here. Bless all y'all out there rolling slabs by hand. These ovals take forever already and I do not have the will or the desire to roll out giant slabs with a rolling pin. I just don't want to. It's a slab roller or bust for me. If I can't roll out slabs with a roller, I'm not making ovals. Now from my limited understanding, many traditional oval pots are made in slip molds. Slip casting is an entire sub-branch of ceramics and I don't have any experience with it. I'm not going to say it's easier or harder than hand building or wheel throwing, it's just different. Each technique has its own unique challenges and will yield different end results. Slip casting is an entire set of skills and tools to learn and understand eventually, but not today. Slip cast ovals have a distinctly exact and clean feel to them. Wheel thrown work or hand built work tends to have more of an organic touch. Now you can get an exact and clean look with any process if you want to. I personally find that I favor the organic feel that speaks to process. And sometimes, like when it's my first time trying to make a thing, I get something entirely unplanned and sometimes unfortunate. And I share all of that here so that everybody can see what it looks like to try things. To be certain, ovals have been made in the past and are being made today using every kind of technique imaginable. My approach was directly related to my pre-existing skills and tools, mostly. Working with a slab base was something relatively new to me, but throwing on the wheel is my jam. Slabs are so sensitive. This is sort of future me speaking because at the time of editing this video, I have worked with several hundreds of pounds of slabs. They are tricky to work with. The less you need to move them, the better, and the fact that I have to drive mine across Texas in a damp box isn't doing them any favors. I also need something to put between each slab to help keep them from slumping around the edges. Another tricky part of ovals is flipping them over and generally keeping the wide base from sagging in one direction or the other. I've tried using little clay nuggies and also sponges. Nothing seems to be foolproof or without new problems. If I can manage to get the whole thing together and stabilize, the piece can be wrapped up to dry. These ovals and any pot with a wide base and thin rim have to be dried extra slowly and completely wrapped in plastic. I essentially have to set them somewhere and forget about them for two or three weeks, which can be super inconvenient when you don't have a ton of space and you have to work around ovals to keep production running. I guess I'm saying I'm not a huge fan up front. They seem like an intense pain to make. Assuming everything dried slow enough not to get a stress crack in the bisque fire, the pot is ready to glaze. I carved a texture into this pot, so I'm going to be glazing it with a simple cream that breaks to rust. This is one of my favorite glazes, although every time I think I understand it, it defies me. I have that on the list of things that I mentally need to mess with until it makes sense. I know the control is somewhere in the nuance of application. My leading theory was the thicker application would likely be more creamy and thinner would be more rusty, but sometimes that doesn't seem to test true, or maybe my application isn't as thick as I'm thinking it is. Much, much to consider there. Thankfully for this pot, the glaze behaved more or less how I was expecting. I would have been okay with a little more breaking on the edges, but at least the entire pot isn't rust colored. This pot and almost every oval I've attempted have bowed in the center. 
I have some leading theories on why this is happening, but no hard evidence. I have heard it has something to do with how the clay memory of the wheel thrown wall behaves when stretched into an oval. In my mind, it sounded like a lot of physics and totally possible, but my source was still hearsay, and I don't know how to do that math. I also have considered that it might have had something to do with the clay memory of my slabs with how they are handled during moving, storage, and transport. I know my situation isn't ideal and it needs some inf improvement and refinement. My last theory was that clay is warping from the heat in the kiln, but this is the weakest theory. It also feels like this would have to rely on one of the above clay memory theories being true. It just doesn't seem likely that heat would warp something that didn't have a memory and inclination to naturally move in a direction to begin with. So lots to unpack here. Plenty of problems for me to solve when it comes to making ovals. For now, I guess you can find cheap wobbly warped ovals in my shop as seconds or in mystery box orders if you're lucky. As of posting this video to Patreon, this funky warped oval that does not wobble is available on my website, bluenosetrading.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, you are in the future, and I have no idea what might be in my shop today. But you can check it out anytime and see what sorts of fun stuff I have in there at bluenosetrading.com. For early access to all my videos and to help support this channel, consider becoming a patron of my work at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Remember that you have great ideas that are worth exploring, drink lots of water, and I will see you all next week.